Okay, hello and welcome to Radicals 1.3, Stating Transformations. Okay, so this is going to bring back a problem that we've been doing for a while, I think ever since uh, first quarter. Yeah? And you're, you're going to see the same exact words that, that I normally tell you guys to write, like reflection across x-axis, vertically stretched, vertically shrunk, right? So those words are all going to be the same that you guys have been doing for the past couple of quarters. Okay. The only difference is we're going to introduce a brand new sentence based on a different letter that we didn't really have to worry about in the previous two quarters. Okay, So we're going to deal with the C value. And the C value is going to cause us to, to write one more sentence. And the sentence that you're going to write is going to be very familiar. It's going to look exactly like the sentence we wrote for the x-axis sentence. Except it's just going to say no reflection across the y-axis or reflection across the y-axis. So it's just a different axis that we're going to connect it to. But as far as the wording, it looks exactly like the one that we just did for A, the A value. Okay? So it's one more sentence. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit more work, a little bit more writing. And in this particular function, since we're dealing with a square root function this time, when we address domain and range, it's going to be a little different. It's not just going to say all real numbers for domain and, and something else for the range. It's going to be based off of a different function. So therefore, domain and range are just going to change. Okay? So please, 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 uh, yeah, don't write all real numbers this time around. All right? So let's go to our first problem. Oh, actually, let's hold off on that. And since I was talking about domain and range, um, here's what you're going to do with domain. You're going to pretty much grab what is called the radicand. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. Yeah, which is basically everything inside the square root symbol. And you're going to set it equal to, greater than or equal to, you're going to set it greater than or equal to zero. And you're going to solve for x. And when you solve for x, that's going to be your domain. Okay? Your range is going to depend on your a value. So if a value is greater than zero, so basically positive, it's going to be g of x, g of x, greater than or equal to k. Your k value is like your, your, your number all the way at the end, right? And if your a value is less than 0, so basically negative, right? Then you're going to go g of x colon g of x, less than or equal to k. Yeah? So a little bit different from the previous uh, transformation problem we just did last quarter. So just be, just be uh, careful about it now. Don't write all row numbers, like I said. Okay, and the, the biggest thing that you want to make sure you can do to get you ready for the, the finding of the four letters, not just three anymore, it's four letters, A, C, H, and K, is you want to rewrite your equation based on, I guess, demonstrating where your four letters are. So your A value is three, your C value is one, positive one. Your H value is two. It looks like a negative two, but you can't trust your eyes. You gotta trust what's in your head. So it's a two, your H value is two, and your K value is five. And notice how it just goes in alphabetical order from left to right, okay? So make sure you can rewrite your equation so you can find the four letters, the numbers that correspond to the four letters, okay? Okay, so in the next one, uh, notice how we took away this, this plus sign, right? This plus sign right here, I replaced it with negative negative okay and then the the irritating thing about c is this okay so your c value has to be i guess separate from your x so because it needs to be separate from your x you got to put it on the outside basically just like what i did so your negative sign is on the outside that's your c value um you're, you're thinking whoa what happened to my two negatives well, since you took out the negative, since you took away the negative from the x, you got to take away a negative from the negative, negative 3. So, since he has 2, now he has just 1. Okay? So, your a value is positive 2 thirds. Your c value is negative 1. Your h value is 3. Your k value is negative 7. Okay? So, that's why I left these example problems on here so that you guys can see uh, more examples of how to rewrite your equation so you can lock in on those four numbers. Okay, and this next one. 
Okay, so I didn't have to replace the positive sign with a negative negative like I did the previous problem, but I still got a GCF, the negative sign. So take away the negative sign from X, which means I also have to take away a negative sign from 4. So I get negative on the outside, X plus 4, inside your parentheses. Then change that positive sign into negative negative. Yeah, so I can see my H value. So A value negative 2, C value negative 1. H value negative 4 and K value negative 3. Okay, so that's the most difficult part about tonight's section, right? Rewriting your equation. Because if you guys don't rewrite it correctly, then you're going to lock in on the wrong numbers, which is going to be bad because then you're going to write the wrong sentences. Yeah? Okay. And oh, I don't think I was supposed to put that slide in there. Actually, I'm not, not, not put it in there. Not, I was supposed to erase it rather. <laughs> okay, so in problem one, I rewrote the equation just like I did on the previous four examples I just showed you. So in my first step, the positive 6 turns into negative negative 6. Then in my second rewrite, I take away a negative from negative x. I take away a negative from negative negative 6. I put it on the outside of the parentheses. And I'm left with my a, which is positive 3. My c, which is negative 1. My h positive 6 and my k positive 4 so I can I can get rid of these four boxes because I just said the four numbers that correspond to a c h and k and when you write your sentences okay here's where these letters are gonna they're gonna connect to your numbers so your first two lines deal with a so the first line is the sign of a second line is the number of a third line is the sine of C. The fourth line is sine and number of H. And the fifth line is sine and number of K also. Okay, so let's see what I do for my first line. It should look very familiar. The plus sign is no reflection across the x-axis. Okay, so the plus sign, like I told you in an earlier lesson, think of the plus sign as saying, I'm going to add in the word no. Because your other option is erase the word no. So you're either going to have the word no in there, or you're not going to have the word no in there. Okay. And an A value of 3 means vertical stretch, because multiplying by 3 makes numbers bigger. So that's why we connect that to stretch. And then just make sure you write by a factor of 3. Okay. Your C value is negative, and it's going to do the exact same thing that A did. Because you have a negative C, you're going to erase the word no. You're just going to write reflection across the y-axis. Don't forget to write y-axis, not x-axis. you got to write y-axis. Okay. And in your h value, positive 6, so horizontal shift, write 6 units. And your k value is positive 4, so vertical shift up 4 units. Okay. All right, so now let's find your domain. So your domain is going to grab your radicand. So you're going to grab the, the, the stuff inside your square root so your stuff meaning negative x plus 6 so grab the negative x plus 6 set it greater than or equal to 0 and solve for x so subtract 6 both sides you're going to get negative x greater than or equal to negative 6 then you're going to divide by your negative because you want to get rid of that negative sign and when you divide by a negative sign you got to remember your inequality symbol changes direction so it was greater than or equal to now it's less than or equal to. So be careful, yeah? When you divide or multiply by a negative, your inequality symbol changes direction. So what does that mean for your domain? It means that your domain is x colon x less than or equal to 6, just like I had computed right above. Okay? And your range, because it is connected to your a value being positive, a value being positive means g of x, g of x, greater than, because your plus sign means it's going to be greater than, or equal to 4, your k value, 4. Okay, so if you need to rewind, go for it, or pause, go for it. Yeah, but I'm just going to go on to number 2, because it's a video, right? Okay, number 2. So when I rewrite my equation, um, I didn't really separate the C value and the X value with parentheses like I did the previous problems, but I, I wrote I wrote out the one so that you can still see that your C value is in front of X. I changed my plus sign into negative negative. 
so that you can see your A value is negative 2, your C value is positive 1, your H value is negative 5, and your K value is negative 3. Okay, so hopefully me doing that allows you to lock in on your A, C, H, and K. So there's your A, C, H, and K right there. Okay, and when you write your five sentences, your A, your A and A are for your first two lines, your C is for your third line, your H for the fourth line, your K for the fifth line. Okay, so negative means we're going to erase the word no, so that's why you don't see the word no reflect, right? It just says reflect. A value 2 means numbers are going to get bigger, so that's why you see stretch, stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, C value being positive means you're going to add in the word no. So no reflection across the y-axis. So don't forget to write y-axis. Okay, negative 5 means horizontal shift left 5 units. And k equals negative 3 means vertical shift down 3 units. Okay, so to do my, my domain, grab the radicand or your stuff inside the square root symbol. So that's x plus 5. Set it greater than or equal to 0. You're going to solve for x, so you're going to subtract 5 both sides, and you get x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So there's your domain right there. Okay. In your range, since your a value is negative, right? since your a value is negative, you're going to do less than. Right? Your a value being negative tells you less than. And then your k value in this problem is negative 3, so you just stick that at the end of your, your, your range, and you got your range answer. Okay. All right, problem three. Okay, we're kind of flying through here. Okay, so to rewrite now, this is the this is the part that gets everybody all the time. Okay, so your first step, yeah, you take away the negative from the x, you separate it, so you take away the negative from the x, so it turns into positive x. Take away the negative from the four, so it turns into positive four. So you got your negative on the outside, and that's your c value, right? Your negative is your c value on the outside of that x. Then you want to turn the positive sign into minus minus, yeah, so that you can see your h value. Because like I always told you, right, h is always after the minus sign, okay? And if I leave it as x plus 4, I don't see my minus sign, so I can't see what the h value is because there's no minus sign. Okay, so your a value is negative 7 thirds, your c value is negative 1, your h value is negative 4, and your k value is negative 2. Okay, so let me unhide these boxes, and it's the exact same numbers I just said. And you're going to match up your a, c, h, and k with the five sentences. So first sentence, a is negative, so you're going to erase the word no, and you're just going to write reflection across the x-axis. Your a value is 7 thirds, and multiplying by that is going to make numbers bigger. So that's why you're going to say stretch by a factor of 7 thirds. Okay. Your c value is negative 1, so you're going to erase the word no again. right? So you're just going to have reflection across the y-axis. Don't forget, different axis. Okay. Your h value is negative 4, so horizontal shift, left 4 units. And k value negative 2. So vertical shift down two units, okay? So grab your radicand to get your domain. So you grab your original radicand, yeah? The one in the original problem. So negative x minus four, okay? I mean, it's not gonna really make a difference, but it's easier to always work with your original radicand, okay? So grab your original radicand, negative x plus four, set it greater than or equal to zero. So add x, I'm sorry, add four on both sides. So you get negative x greater than or equal to 4, divide by negative, your symbol, your inequality symbol switches direction. So it used to be greater than, now it's less than because you divided by negative. Okay, so don't forget about that. All right, so your domain is the exact same thing we just got above. And your range, well, let's see, my a value in this problem is, a is negative, so that means less than or equal to. So there's your less than or equal to. And your k value, negative 2. And this problem is done. Okay, last problem for the day. Number 4. Okay, ooh, this one actually didn't have to be rewritten. Yeah? 
it didn't have to be rewritten. So your A value is two thirds, positive two thirds. Your C value is positive one, because that's the number in front of X. We don't see it, but we know it's there. Your H value is three, positive three. And your K value is positive seven. Okay, so let's unhide these boxes with the numbers I just said. And your A, C, H, and K match up with these five sentences. So your A value is positive. So that means add in the word no. Your A value is two-thirds, and multiplying by two-thirds makes answers smaller. So that's why you're going to write shrink by a factor of two-thirds. Your C value is positive, so you're going to add in the word no. So no reflection across the Y axis. Okay. H value positive three, so you're going to go right three units. And K value positive seven, so you're going to go up seven units. Okay, grab your radicand x minus three, set it greater than or equal to zero, add three on both sides, you get x is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so that's your domain. Okay, this problem, your, your a value is positive. Yeah, your a value is positive. So since the a value is positive, we got greater than, right, and greater than your k value, which is seven, so g of x, g of x, greater than or equal to seven, okay? All right, so I kind of flew by this lesson because most of it is, um, yeah, a kind of a review. Yeah, you guys, just, you guys just did this last quarter and part of first quarter. So this hopefully is a little bit more familiar now as far as the wording, as far as what I, what I connect the letters to, right? So hopefully it starts to make a little more sense. Uh, just, just practice the, the things that you guys got wrong, right? or they didn't understand, and yeah, you'll get there. You'll get it. You'll get it, okay? The main thing is, you guys, um, don't put all real numbers for domain. It is not all real numbers. This is a totally different function. This is a radical function, so don't put all real numbers for domain, okay? So good luck in this assignment, and I will see you in class. Bye-bye.